Jared Craig with the Vet Voice podcast on behalf of Veterans for America First and Legacy Pack. I have the pleasure of interviewing today fellow ambassador Glenn Baker from the Glenn Baker Band. Now, Glenn, you recently had an event in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, would you like to share with the viewers uh, how that went? Jared, I'd be happy to, man. And thanks for having me on your podcast. My my brother, we had a uh, we had a heck of a time at Third and Lindsley in Nashville, Tennessee, back in September. Had a um, a great concert with the uh, the notorious Big and Rich, <laughs> John wow. Rich, who's on Fox Nation, is a very strong conservative, and he and I have a lot of thoughts that are alike. So we went up there and we just had us a party together and uh, spread some uh, some truth and some love and some unity there in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a great time. Met a lot of great people. Um, in fact, met some folks from uh, VFAF that came and supported us, and we've uh, we've got some great things coming together from that. Yeah, uh, Big and Rich, they've been around for quite a while, and uh, I really have enjoyed hearing somebody from, you know, the Hollywood, the music industry, stepping up and speaking out, you know, with a conservative voice. And John Rich has, uh, you know, been a pretty consistent voice with that. Uh, like you said, he's got his own show on the, the Fox uh, streaming channel and uh, he's good people, you know. So, yeah. so do you have any other events coming up in the near future? You know what we do? We got a, we've got next year, we're starting a tour across America, spreading some unity. We're going to be in all 50 states next year. So we got some good things coming, but I do have something here locally that I've just been invited to take a part in here and got to understand something. When I tell you this, I'm in Broward County, Florida, and um, the, the country and the world seems to have labeled Florida as the most open, fair state in the union through the last two and a half years of this pandemic. Um, but Broward County many times is the communist capital of, Bra of Florida and not always quite as open as, uh, as what people would think Florida should be. So it's really fun when I get to run into people that are somewhat like-minded and love our, our country and, and love our freedom and support our veterans. So we're going to be part of a third annual veteran recognition program. Uh, and it's going to be on a Wednesday night in Hollywood, Florida. Um, at a civic center there, and I'll, I'll post that information. I'll give you the information and the details later on, and we can post that if we need to. But um, we're just honoring the veterans, man. We're going to have some food, fun, a big old concert. There's going to be um, some donations and prizes received for our veterans, and it's just a night for Hollywood, Florida, and Broward County to honor those that have signed that dotted line, man, and risked everything for us to be able to enjoy everything. Well, that's a great message. It's a great reason. As I've been going up the East Coast, I've been from Georgia all the way up to Maine in the last couple of weeks, and I have been reaching out doing kind of like the voters voices, what matters to the people here. And I'm finding that the veterans in every state from Georgia to Maine feel as though in some regards they've been forgotten, either with yeah. veterans benefits. And I, I was promoting the idea of automatic enrollment for VA benefits for our active military to then transfer out of the military and have automatic VA benefits. And most people that are not in the military thought that's how it worked, and that is oh, not no. how it worked. No, it does not, young man. I'm a Desert Storm veteran myself, so I know what it's like to get involved and, and try to get those benefits started. And even up until recently, you had to fill out a complete mini-page survey to, to find what level you qualified for medically, which blows my mind. You know, if you make too much money, you got to pay a great big copay, and it's just like buying insurance up to recently, up until actually Trump was in office. So that changed a little bit. But yeah, it's been a fiasco. So I, I understand where you're coming from, and that would be an ideal situation. Why well, have another thing they got to worry about when they're coming home? Right. And the time between their discharge from the military and when they get their VA benefits, I, that's where I believe. We have so many of our vets that go homeless. Yeah. They have untreated mental health issues and physical health issues that cause them to, to break down. And that, I think, is the, the catalyst for so many suicides that we're all concerned about. And then the homelessness. Um, yeah. the homelessness is something that we should be able to take care of. And groups like yours getting out there and groups like Veterans for America First and my podcast, I hope that it makes a difference in the voters' 
impact as to who they vote for this cycle and the next cycle and into perpetuity. My friend, so, I think everything is going to make a difference. You know, you mentioned a minute ago that you were excited to see somebody from the main stream of music come out and speak out. And, you know, sometimes it just takes one. And maybe then it's going to take two. And before long, it's three and five and ten. And people get this courage from when somebody uh, takes a step out and puts it all at risk. And that's what you're doing. And that that's actually what we're trying to do. I, I'm just back in the music world two and a half years after taking 16 years off. And quite frankly, it's because I was so angry with what's happening in our country that I couldn't fight. I'm not going to fight with my gun, hopefully ever again. But I can fight and, and spread the, the truth with my mouth because I got a big old mouth. And uh, so we're going to we're risking it. And John Rich is risking it. Good news about John. John don't care. He's already made his. He's going to say what he's going to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And you're going to say what you're going to say. And hopefully we'll give somebody a little bit of courage to step up and join. They can't fix all of us. No, no, absolutely. They can't. Now they've tried, <laughs> but we just keep getting back up. You know, we wow. just keep getting back up. And seeing the the Twitter recently uh, had a, a change in their their uh, ownership, I, I hopefully that's going to be a, a drastic change in the speech because we have so much censorship and being shut down. And uh, that leads me into a couple of uh, pieces. I wrote a, a a piece a while back called "Caged and Angry," and it was a short essay. Now, essays aren't as fun as a good country song. <laughs> and I understand you have a new hit out uh, called No No New Normal. Yeah. And I listen to that. Uh, tell the, the voters or the listeners uh, a little bit about that new song. Well, you know what, my friend, whenever this whole uh, whole pandemic, and I, I can't even say pandemic, and I hardly ever, ever say the, the, the coronavirus. It's just this. I haven't watched the news in 20 years. But I, but you hear things and you see things and they started coming on immediately and just saying, hey, this is the new normal. You might as well just get get used to it. Man, it ticked me off where I couldn't even see straight. And I woke up in the middle of the night about yeah, a month or two or three into this thing and wrote no new normal. And it's no new normal. We got to take our country back because this is an agenda. This whole thing is designed to take away our freedom. So I'm going to be loud about it. God made me funny. I'm five foot four on a good day with a 19 and a half inch neck. And my hands are so little they can't fit around a guitar a guitar neck. So I never learned it. Well, they have the slide guitar, but you still have to do it from one way or the other. They do, but that was my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, the song is fantastic. It speaks to the conservative voter. I, I'm seeing more musicians come out. You know, Kid Rock, he came out with a couple of songs. There's other people that are following in y'all's momentum to bring the idea that it's okay to love your country, yeah. that it's okay to support conservative values. And one thing I've said, it sounds a little country, but all politics starts on the porch. Right. You got you to gotta have a community. You got to know right. your neighbor. And don't let the liberal basement dweller from down the street have all the oxygen in the room when they start talking. Um, one thing I said I was going to do this year is have a third table at the Thanksgiving dinner. You got the grown-ups, the kids' table, and those we don't want to hear from anymore. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, you know, Jared, you say that, and it, it's really kind of frustrating and aggravating that at what point did it become a cuss word to say proud American? You know, at what point did it become politically incorrect to to care for our flag I, this blows my mind right. i'm 55 years old i can't imagine we have gotten to this point and what really bothers me and it doesn't scare me because god's in control but what really bothers me is what if we don't do something now, i'm not talking about say something i'm not talking about sitting behind our computer and typing something I'm talking about we've got to do something. If we don't, within a year or two, we will not recognize this United States of America again. And you know what? People can say, well, man, you know, I don't want to sacrifice my job. Or what if it costs me money? Well, what if it costs you money? What if you sacrifice something? My friends, if you don't, your kids won't have what you've had. 
your grandkids won't have what you have. So I'm about fed up with excuses and I'm not trying to be mean, but it's trying to do what you can do, whatever it is you can do. If you can write, write. If you can sing, sing. If you can go knock on doors, go knock on doors, but get out and do something or we're going to be in trouble. We got to unite and get together. And we can't forget that our founding fathers put everything on the line. Everything. When they signed that Declaration of Independence, they knew they were signing their death warrants. Yes, sir. And we come from a, a history of proud people who want to be left alone to be prosperous without being subjected to tyrannical oversight. Absolutely. And that's why we went west. That's the, the, the American nature of you leave us alone. We want freedom, liberty, and the ability to seek our own prosperity. You know, yes, our pursuit of happiness is for us to make. And not everybody's going to reach happiness, but we should have the right to pursue it. Absolutely. You're 100% right. We have been lulled into submissiveness for the last 50 to 60 or 70 years. There's a reason that a television program is called program. And people have been glued to that thing for all of my life. And, and longer, um, not knowing that we'd be lulled into submission. It's just like complacency took over. But there is a spark going across America right now. It's starting to be fanned into a flame. And there are people that are seeing the agenda and starting to, to realize what has happened, what part of the experiment that we've been involved in, and we're not going to stand for it any longer. And so I commend what you're doing. I know you're out on the road and I know you're doing these interviews and I know you're sacrificing this. You're not getting rich doing this. You're out here doing this because you have a passion for our country. So I commend that. And I commend the men and women that are taking that same stand, doing whatever it is that they're doing to help us take our country back. The song says, I woke up this morning and looked out the door to a country I don't recognize. That's the truth. Yeah, and the one thing that I think a lot of people are forgetting is that the most important thing they can do is get out and vote. John Frederick said this the other day, count the number of safety belts in your car and take that many people with you to the, the voting precincts. Right. Make sure that people get out and do vote and make sure that they know why they're voting that way. Uh -huh. Now, one thing that uh, I have noticed that we haven't discussed is the Democrats are going crazy right now because the youth yeah. that are just now turning 18 are rebelling against the millennials' perspective. So we've got the youth that are turning conservative. We've uh -huh. got the educated minorities that are turning conservative. This inflation and the bad economy, we've got the suburban moms who are buying fuel and buying groceries and putting everything on a tighter budget. All of their bread and butter cornered demographics are starting to rethink their principles. Yeah. And yeah. the Dems don't know what to do because they don't have a belief system. They don't have a belief system and they, they end up just talking the, uh, the chatter, whatever they feel like at the moment is important. And that changes almost on a daily basis. So they end up contradicting themselves time and time and time again. Oh, yeah. There was a recent conversation I had with someone who had changed their mind. And I was talking about my father being a Vietnam veteran. He's a Marine. And when he came back from the Vietnam War, the liberals and the leftists were screaming as in a de derogatory way, baby killer, baby killer. Yeah. And now you look at it, try to consolidate that with their stance on abortion uh -huh. and identifying with both arguments. You can't consolidate that. And yeah. that you hit the nail on the head that if you want to know what they're about. Just wait. Just wait a minute. They'll change it. Uh -huh. Yeah, you're 100% right. And, and we're seeing that down here. Like I said, this is a melting pot down here. So I get to speak to a lot of different people down here in Broward County. Spoke to a gentleman eh, yesterday, I believe. Um, I live near a pretty big hub for the LGBTQs. There's a there's a city there. It's 95% inhabited by folks that identify that way. And um, we were, I was talking to a, a black gentleman, very well educated, that is a, that's homosexual. And we were talking. And uh, he looked at me and asked me, he said, well, what do you identify as gender-wise? And I kind of looked at him. I said, 
I've never been asked that question. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent heterosexual redneck man. And he's like, see, that's good, man. You know exactly what you are. I say, yeah, but do you? And he's, he looked at me funny. He said, well, now that you mention it, I think I do. So what I'm, what I'm telling you, these agendas change all the time. There's now 53, I guess, different gender identities that they're talking about. It's confusion that's being brought into our country. And when people are confused, they can't stand for anything. Exactly. And they're, they're, it's a smoke screen. I've said that the Dems don't have logical math arguments. They only have emotion. Yep. And they're arguing emotional nonsense to keep you from looking at your dollar, your buying power, mm -hmm. your 401k, because they want you to feel a certain way instead of justify your conduct. Right. And feelings will get us in trouble because feelings and emotions will lie to you. Most of the time, when people have gotten in a bind, it's because they followed their feelings, not followed what they knew was right. Right. I'm a family law attorney. I didn't know if you knew that. And no, a lot of my practice has to do with people who act on the spur of the moment solely on emotions uh -huh. and their misconduct or their, their false move in one way or the other is normally the wrong thing to do when they do it. Right. So, and they attack the youth. They attack the, the the uninformed, the uneducated, to be their mouth or mouth uh, pieces. So, Glenn, you keep doing what you're doing. I understand you have uh, a lot of of good things to say. Please reach out to me if you want to do a follow up. I want to do a follow up after the election to do a. Uh, a, a ground zero as to how big of an impact the red wave was. Right. And I want to see from Florida to Maine and from the East Coast to the West Coast to give a voice to the conservative mouthpieces, the conservative voters, and the forgotten. Well, Jared, there's going to be a time where we'll reach out and have you involved with what we're doing and come join us. We're going to be in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and Sacramento, California, starting in January, going across this great nation. Going to be releasing a brand new song that I've written called Soldiers Strong Come the, Come the Winter. Um, did a show with General Flynn last year, and we were raising money for an organization called Soldiers Strong that puts exoskeletons on paralyzed veterans so they can walk again. Uh, when I saw this Marine get up out of his wheelchair after being paralyzed seven years and telling the work country, telling the, the, the room, but the country, how he's going to get a chance to walk his daughter down the aisle someday, it broke me. Uh, literally tears streaming down my face. And so we wrote a song about that. We're going to be releasing that this winter. But we've got some great things happening. I appreciate you taking the time out of your Sunday just to chat with me, my friend. Well, Always invite me to anything because you can threaten me with a good time because I'll show up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, if you don't mind, I'm going to do a quick plug. Instagram and Facebook destroyed sure. me about four weeks ago. So we're rebuilding. If you'll follow us on the Glenn Baker band, the Glenn Baker band is my Instagram account. Follow me and get it out there. Let's get this message across America. We want to bring unity. We're not out here as, as this bad, bad conservatives trying to cause problems that, that the media is trying to tell everybody we are. We want left and right to come together. We want rich and poor to come together, black and white, gay and straight. All of us are Americans. And if we're fighting with each other, we're not able to take a stand against what's happening to us as a whole. That's my message. Well, thank you very much. And once again, thank you for coming on. And God bless America. You bet you, sir. Thank you very much.